The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. I hope all of you can see me and hear me. Just to confirm in the questions panel so that uh, I can just type in yes or your favorite color in the questions panel. OK, I see a few. Yes. All right. Hey, Kanil. Hi again. All right, all right, all right. Wonderful. So thanks for the confirmations, everyone. And uh, uh, welcome again. Welcome again to uh, uh, Algo Trading Week uh, Day 2. Uh, as uh, all of you know that, uh, all right, my screen is visible. All right, so as uh, you can see here, I, uh, uh, we had uh, we started uh, Algo Trading Week a couple of days back with day zero. Uh, we had a panel discussion between experts about before you get into quant and algo trading. And uh, then yesterday we hosted uh, Dr. Anish Chan where where we had a Q and A session with him. Uh, we talked about how to become a successful quant. Uh, recordings of both these sessions are available here so in case you have any of you have missed you can access them here and today we have here with us dr hui liu and uh, in today's presentation he is going to uh, talk about how to choose the best stocks and uh, live trade them so yeah so that is the topic for today and uh, I, a very important point i would like to share with you is tomorrow we are going to start our day a bit early than usual so tomorrow's session will be conducted by Lohan Benno from, uh, so he will be joining from Japan. So we'll start our day a bit early and uh, he'll be conducting a two hour masterclass on short selling. And uh, for people uh, living in New York, it is going to be midnight. Uh, for people living in London, it is going to be 5 a.m. in the morning. For people in Singapore, it is going to be noon. And for people in Sydney, it is going to be 2 a.m. And for people like me in India, it is going to be 9.30 in the morning. All right, so before we start off with today's presentation, I would also like to talk about algo trading competition. Now, many of you attended yesterday's webinar and uh, you already know that uh, once you clear, if you really want to participate into algo trading competition and start learning for free, you can click on get started and then you'll reach to this page on algo trading competition 2021 and then here are all the rules that you can see uh, just to give you a very brief idea there are going to be three different tests on uh, three main pillars of quantitative and algorithmic trading right so first one is global financial markets now the test for global financial market is open now so as you can see on day 2 for september 25 if this link is available you can go here right now and it, it is open for eight hours and you can attempt this test and simultaneously going ahead uh, you can also prepare for the upcoming two tests uh, so this uh, test two is going to be uh, available on 27th you can see opening soon message here so you can prepare for that statistics for trading module two that is the essential uh, resources to learn statistics for trading or prepare for this test and similarly we have the third, third module that is python and machine learning so here uh, uh, it is going to be uh, conducted on 29th and on 30th of september we are going to announce the winners of this competition now oh, what is the price of for the winners and all of this is mentioned here so you can just visit this page and uh, we'll get to know about it all right now moving back to our today's presentation so all right so today's presentation uh, all right so uh, uh, so today's presentation is on how to choose best stocks and live trading by dr he liu a quick introduction to dr liu so dr liu is founder of uh, running river investments which is a 
private hedge fund that uh, specializes in development and implementation of various automated trading strategies. He is also the author of iBridge Pi, which is a flexible and easy to use Python package that talks to interactive brokers C++ API. Uh, Dr. Hui Liu is also a certified Six Sigma Black Belt Practitioners. All right, so uh, join me uh, to welcome Dr. Liu. Dr. Liu, how are you doing today? Uh, good morning. Ah, yeah. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you very much. I'm really uh, glad I have the opportunity to give a presentation, actually. Thank you very much. OK, so I'm going to uh, make you the presenter now, and uh, you can share your screen. So all right. Start session. Can you see my screen right now? Yes, I can see. OK, then it's time to start. Thank you very okay. much for it. Yeah. OK, so uh, that's about it, guys. So I'm going to turn off uh, my camera. and. Uh, Meanwhile, just wanted to share one thing that uh, at the end of the presentation, we are going to conduct the Q&A. And, &A. and uh, uh, for the last 15 minutes, we'll be answering all your questions. Uh, so make sure that you put all of your questions in that questions panel uh, in advance, and uh, we'll try to answer as many questions as possible. Thank you. Over to you, Doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, let's start my session. My name is Hui Liu, I live in San Jose, California, United States. My local time is 6.34, something like that. And actually, if you happen to visit San Jose area, drop me an email. I really love to meet you in person, actually. So the topic of today's presentation is how to choose the best stocks and live trade. To choose the best stocks, everyone have their own experience and have their own method. But I'm going to talk about how to set up a model, statistic model, and then based on the model, choose the best stocks. Then I will go to talk about backtesting and live trading. So here is the content of today's presentation. First, I'm going to talk about come up a trading idea because I need to have something to talk about. Here, I call it buy low and sell high trading idea. I'm going to talk about that. After I have the trading ideas, I need to validate my trading idea. To do that, I need to collect historical data and then build a machine learning model after I have the machine learning model, I can run the model to see the performance in the past. If I feel happy about the result, then I will create a trading robot in average pi. It's very straightforward in average pi to build a trading robot. After that, I'm pretty sure you will be scared to put money into your strategy because you need to do some testing. And average pi is able to backtest your strategy and then live trade. OK, then let's start the journey. So first, come up with trading ideas. Come up trading ideas, there's multiple ways. For example, you can read financial reports. You can read SEC quarterly release or anything you want, even Twitter or social medias, and then get a feeling about the company did some analysis. However, I'm going to talk about the quantitative way. For example, this chart, the left one, is the historical data of SPY. SPY is the ETF. You can think about this uh, stock. It's tracking Standard Poor 500 index, which is the major US market indicator, the very popular one. This is an overall market indicator. But SPY is the ETF you can trade. And that is to track SP500 index. I will call it SPY in this presentation. OK, if we, you go to Yahoo Finance, it's really good 
resources about historical data. Actually, you can see in the past, in the very early past, actually, SPY go up, down, up, down, go up. And we are still in a good trend and going up at the moment. And if you think about that, it's pretty good trending. So which means as long as you get into the market and then hold it, for example, you get into SPY at this area and keep holding, you will have pretty good profit. However, if you go into the market at this area, then you will experience some turbulence, but still go up. Okay. However, it's not that stable. Then let's go into more details. So we switch, oh, this bar is daily bar. So you can see it's max and overall. So each data point is a, a daily bar. And overall, if we go to the more zoom in, go to three months, you will see the price go up, down, up, down. And think about, look at this one carefully. Is You can see the price go up, down, up, down, up, and up, down, up, down. Looks like in short term, it's a pretty good swing pattern. Swing pattern, which means the price will go up, go down, go up, go down like this. So my goal is to buy low and sell high, which means I want to go buy in, go go into the market at a lower point and sell at a high point to make profit. This is uh, the trading ideas based on my observation. That's I'm going to build a model and then backtest and live trading. Actually, at this point, I still don't know if it's a good model or not. So let's try to do something. The next step is to collect historical data and then verify my trading idea. To collect historical data, there are multiple choices. So you can go to brokers, for example, interactive brokers. They have pretty good historical data. Also, if you don't want to pay anything, you can go to Yahoo Finance. It's a really, really good uh, data provider. And there are other data providers you can use. So your choice to collect historical data related to your trading model. So assume you have your data and then let's build a machine, machine learning model. I will, following, I will follow these steps to build, actually to give you a demo about how to use average pair to build a machine learning model. And then we'll, I will talk about build a stock screener to choose the best stock and then we can trade. So I will use average pie to retrieve historical data from Yahoo Finance and then prepare data. That's something we need to do before the machine learning model to run. And then I will build a simple linear regression model. If you uh, have some basic statistics, you will feel very familiar with linear regression. Even if it's a simple model, but it's a really powerful model, actually. Then to help you understand the model, I will draw, make some drawings to visualize the model. Then I will build a stock screener to screen stocks. So I will use average pi to demo. I will switch to Jupyter Notebook to give you a demo because it's a really straightforward way to give you a demo. Okay. So let me make the screen bigger enough so that you can see it easier. Actually, looks long, but if we dive into it, it's a very straightforward. Okay, let's run it one by one with my explanation. There are, at the beginning, there are a few- insights. Sorry to interrupt, Dr. Liu. Uh, yeah. We are seeing a white screen. I think uh, you have to- White share screen. screen, oh, really? Yeah, now we can see the presentation and your browser. How about now? Can you see my screen? 
we can see your presentation uh, well, open in, in the Chrome. Well, right now, I'm using the Jupyter Notebook. Okay, now we can see the Jupyter Notebook, yes. Oh, okay, because I just switched. Okay, okay. Let me start by, uh, okay, just uh, from the top, there are a few imports. So it's imported already. Then the next step is to build a iBridgePy object. It's as simple as build trader for backtest. Let's run it. So we have a uh, iBridgePy object already. The next step I'm going to do is to retrieve historical data. Let's use SPY. What I want to do is to have a daily bar. So I put one day. And I want to go back as much as possible so that I just randomly choose 8,000 day. D stands for day in average pi. And the data provider name, I put Yahoo Finance. The function I used is request historical data. So let's read it. So T is average pi. So which means I want average pi to use you to request historical data. The data I want is SPY. I want a daily bar. And I want historical data go back 8,000 days. And using data provider name is Yahoo Finance. The return of this function is pandas data free. And to make it easier, I switch to the column to lower case. Let's run it, we should have it. And then to visualize the data, I just run the tail of this pandas data frame. You can see open, high, low, close, volume, dividend, stock space. So that's typical Yahoo Finance data and with a date. The latest one is on the bottom. The next step, what I'm going to do is to add a few columns so that we can build a machine learning model. The idea is very straightforward. What I'm going to do is I want to calculate the price, close price change from yesterday to today, which means and use percentage. So my idea is like this. If from the price close, the close price change from yesterday to today is a minus number, which means the price dropped from yesterday to today. If it's positive number, which means the price go up from yesterday to today. So at the moment, assume it's the end of trading day. And then if I see the price go lower from yesterday, I want to see if the price, close price from today to tomorrow, if that will be go up. If it yes, it means I have a swing model, which means I have opportunity to buy in when the price goes down. So my prediction is the price will go up. Okay, let's go line by line to make it even clearer. The first thing I want to do is to use the close price and shift just down, which means because the close is the close price of every day if we shift it then i will have a column the price the column name is close price of yesterday then i add another column the column is called close price change from yesterday to today literally what i'm doing is use today's close price minus yesterday's close price and then over by yesterday's close price. Similarly, I can have another column, which is a close price change from today to tomorrow. And also this one is percentage. And then I add it to my column. Then drop NA because machine learning cannot handle NA, which it means not a number. And then to visualize the data I have, as I explained, I added three columns. Close price of yesterday, close price change from yesterday to today. You can see their positive number and negative number. 
positive number means the price go up. Go up, you can see the yesterday price is this price, and today's close price is hmm, positive. Okay, hold on, let me see. Okay, so, oh yes, it is price go up. You can see today's close, yesterday's close, and the price go up. If it's negative, means the price dropped. Price dropped. And I shift the column a little bit. Literally, I shift it this way. You can see this number are same. So I just see shift this column uh, up one step. Then I got a price. So think about this column, just only one row, just one row. So I have the price is close price. I have yesterday's price change and price change to tomorrow. The reason I build up my data in this way is because the machine learning package takes data row by row. And then based on this number, I can build a machine learning model. Then the next step is to prepare a simple linear regression machine learning model. Let's explain what goes on. Actually, why is the target, which is the simulation target? X is what I want to use to predict the price. So based on these two lines, which means I want to predict the close price change tomorrow by the price change from yesterday to today. So I have X, I have Y. And I have a machine learning model, which is linear regression model. I use model to feed X to Y so that I have model. Then I print the model outcome, which is coefficient and intersection. The coefficient, because this one is a simple machine learning, simple linear regression, when the coefficient is minus, which means there is a negative correlation. If it's positive, then this one, which means a, a positive co, co, correlation. The, the next step is I want to, to draw a chart to help you to understand the result of this machine learning model. What I'm going to do is to prepare the data and then make a plot. The plot, let me explain the plot. The x-axis is the close price change from yesterday to today. The y-axis is close price change from today to tomorrow, as explained in percentage. And each dots represent a day, a daily bar data from Yahoo Finance for SPY. So you can see the, the data points is just spread out like this. And the black line is the linear regression result. And because the coefficient is negative, so we can see this line is tilted a little bit like this way. So this is the machine learning model. And what does it mean when it's negative correlated? It means when the price drop, think about this area. This area is the price drop from yesterday to today. Based on the learning model, we predict the price is likely to go up, considering this area. So the price, yesterday price is negative. Oh, at this area, consider this area, is means so yesterday price is dropped, but tomorrow will go up. You can see like this. And in this area means if yesterday price is go up, tomorrow will go down. So if it fits perfectly, then every line will stay on this black line. However, this is not a perfect model. So that it's not a perfect line. And we see a trend like this. After I observe this swim model. My thinking is, if I use this one as a trading model, can I make profit or not? The model I mean is, I will 
do uh, automated trading robots and check price at the end of a trading day to see if the price go up or go down and then place order at the end of the trading the market uh, at the end of a trading market 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 open market let's say it's 359 eastern time because us market closed at 4 p.m so i assume at that moment i will have today's close price and i can compare yesterday's price is that can i make profit or not how oh, good the profit is that's what i'm going to know this is model but i will do that using back test back testing but what i'm going to do is i want to build up a stock screener to understand if that model works for other stocks and if works which stock is a good stock to follow this model so this is what i'm going to demo this part nothing new because this is just a purely repetitive and i build everything into a function the input out function is a historical data the output is just the coefficient so in this way we can easily run this function so this part a little bit explanation to build a stock screener the first thing you need is to have a stock universe the universe means you have a group of candidates and then using a for loop go through every stock and go through for every stock go through this model then calculate coefficient and print it out so that i'm going to run it in real time okay good i got some result what i'm what I did here, I put a few stocks, SPY, QQQ, QQQ is the uh, NASDAQ, uh, NASDAQ actually, the QQQ is the ETF to track NASDAQ index. Apple, uh, very popular stock, Google stock, and Tesla, is also a popular stock. And I just follow exact pattern get historical data from machine learning model, and then I got coefficient. Here's the result. You can see SPY, Tesla. Let's check the result. So SPY has the absolute value, the absolute value has the highest coefficient, which means the trend is the strongest in this whole stock universe, and then followed by QQQ. And uh, Google, the coefficient will be much lower. And the lowest one is Tesla. However, we observe something strange is other stocks are negative coefficient. However, Tesla is positive. How can we understand this result? The answer is for SPY, this is the swing chain, swing, swing pattern. Swing pattern means go up go down go up go down go up go down this is a swing pattern however for tesla think about tesla tesla likes to go up 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 at least based on the model is that a st strong trend probably not because this value is too small but it's just like what we observed about the, the price change in tesla so after I did this thing, my ambition on algorithm trading actually will not stop there because this model is too simple. I just use yesterday's price, yesterday's price to predict tomorrow. What if I want some advanced indicator? Can I use advanced indicator to predict to predict future? Here I give you an example is MACD, which is moving average, uh, indicator of moving average crossover. I build a function. Let me briefly introduce the individual step. Here I have moving average 10, moving average 30, 
and MACD is the crossover of fast moving average over slow moving average. And what I did is percentage wise. So I have three columns and then I add a yield. Yield is defined as the price before. Drop an A, build up model and draw a plot. Let's run it to see, can I use MACD to predict future. This is the result. If using SPY, we can see that the trend is not that strong as the buy low sell high model. And it's a little bit positive. So which means using MACD 10 and 30 daily bar to predict future will not be that successful as before, as the model, the buy low sell high price model. Also, if I follow the exactly pattern to build a stock screener like this way, I will find out even for other stock, compare with others, SPY is relatively the strong pattern compared to others. Tesla is still strange, but this time a little bit positive than before. Okay, after we got this result, what we have is a statistical machine learning model, and we, build, we predict future using historical data. So what I'm going to do next is, considering I have a buy low sell high model, and I think the even if this number is not a, a big number, absolute value is not that big, I still want to see, can I make some profit using this swim model? I'm switching my screen to my presentation. I want to make sure you can see it right now. And then let's continue. So the next part is I want to do some Algo trading, automated trading. Here, I'm going to talk about using average pi to do algorithm trading. I, average pi is easy to use Python platform. You can backtest and live trade with different brokers. The main difference between average pi with other products is 100% privacy. The reason I want to mention that is you can download average pi to your computer and install it to your cloud computer if you want. And using IB Interactive Broker as an example, you need to download uh, IB TWS, which is the client software from Interactive Broker to your computer. And then Average Pi will communicate with IB TWS and IB TWS will go to the broker. And everything happens in your computer. So you don't need to worry about the privacy issue. That's the main benefit of Average Pi. Then you can use Average Pi to manage multiple accounts. Considering you are a hedge fund manager, you have a lot of clients account or portfolio. Then you need an efficient way to manage those accounts. The next is Average Pi can backtest using any data providers, which means you can download any historical data from any data provider to your local computer and then backtest your strategy. If you are happy with the model you built, you can live trade using average pi. There's no code change. You just switch from testme.py to runme.py, then you can start live trade. If you go to averagepi.com, you can download it to your computer to try it out. Okay, we have model and we we call the model is buy low sell high model and conclusion from the model is SPY may work using this model, but others may not have the best result. So the next part is to build automated trading robots in iBridge Pack. Here is how you build a buy low sell high model in iBridge Pack. Just a few lines. I can go through line by line to help you understand this model. 
there are two functions, major function you are going to use. The first one is called initialize. Average pi run this function only once at the beginning of your execution, which means you click start, average pi start to run. And at the beginning, it will execute initialize function. The goal of this function is kind of setting up configuration define variables. For example, if I want to have a global variable called security, what I'm going to is say, I have used context dot security. This one, you can consider it as a global variable. As long as your function has a context input, you can use it in any other functions in average pi. So consider it as a global variable. In this global variable, I have SPY to define, which means I want to treat SPY in this model. And the next line is schedule function. This function is tell average pi to run another function at specific time. In this example, I tell average pi say, I want to run a function, the function name is called by low cell high. This is the function name. I want to run this function. How often I want to run it? I want to run it every trading day. And I want to run it one minute before the market close, which is 15.59 Eastern time, because US market close at 4 p.m. We assume at this moment, we will have a price very close to the real close price time on that day. This is approximation or assumption. Because if the market close, we will have absolute right close price. However, we cannot trade on that price. If market is still open, we don't have an absolute correct close price, but we have the opportunity to trade. So to build automated trading robots, we want to trade so that we use this approximation, which is use the price at 359 to simulate the real close price. Is that a good approximation? The answer is pretty good based on my experience. Okay, so that's very straightforward. And this is the real trading logic is called buy low sell high function this function we followed our model is request historical data and then look for close price yesterday and look for the close price today if the close price today greater than close price yesterday then we sell off all SPY positions, if any, which means the price from yesterday to today go up and I should get my profit. That's why I want to sell off. On the opposite side, which means the price drops from yesterday to today, which means I want to buy in. I want to buy 100% of my portfolio go into SPY. That's it. The function in average pi I use is use is order target percentage, which means I want to 100 percentage of my portfolio go to SPY. This is my model, and then I have model. The next thing I want to do is to backtest. What I'm going to do backtest in average pi is I can you can use any you can use historical data directly from brokers. For example, you use interactive brokers as your broker to get historical data. Also, you can use any third-party data providers and download them to your local, save it as a file, and then backtest. In average pi, you can test minute by minute, or even second by second if you want, or hourly, hour by hour, or day by day, as long as you configure it right, it supports then you can come up, I, can, I will show you some speed up method to speed up the simulation. If you are looking forward to know more, you can go to this tutorial, but here I'm going to give you a demo. The first demo is 
actually backtesting in average pad is really really simple and we have a demo it's called test me easiest it's really easiest what you need to do is just pick a start time pick an end time for backtesting and confirm data provider and run it let's switch to the demo part make sure you can see my screen I assume you can see it right now and let me clean up the result okay what you need to do is just do three things first you need to confirm your strategy file which is demo by low cell high dot py you must choose which strategy you want to run for the easiest one for the easiest back testing I use IB, so you don't need to change the default as data provider, it's just IB. You need to pick an end time using date time package. You need to choose a start time. That's all you need to set up. For the others, it's just the default value. And you don't need to, oh, actually, you don't need to, this part, you don't even need that part. Actually, if you have it, then you are good to backtest. On my side, you need I, I started iBridge Pi uh, IB Gateway or TWS so that I can run it. So in okay, started recommended. Okay, actually you can see after I click run, the backtesting started. However, right now the historic, uh, historical data farm from interactive broker is not active at the moment so that you may not see a good result but i will give you other demos the other demo is let me go to the next page i assume you can see my screen at the moment i'm switching back to my uh you can see the I'm, Jupyter notebook oh still how about now still Jupyter notebook can you see the uh my presentation um uh, we are seeing algo trading summit test me yeah, easiest yes that's, yeah, that's uh, uh, no right now it's okay, a local, now we hit. Can, local hit now, okay. now we can see uh the presentation okay good okay so I'm switching to the next demo actually because the first demo is a little bit uh, not running smoothly because the data farm is not good at the moment. I'm going to show you is to use local historical data to test. The difference between previous is it's not the easiest, but it will be uh more reliable because you have your historical data in your local file so that you can run it this is the uh actually the result you will see it in my demo oh oh yeah the, the his, historical data farm is not good at the moment let's switch to let me make sure you can see the jupyter notebook right now i'm switching to the jupyter notebook again but this time I changed my file a little bit. Let me explain it quickly so that I can. So what you need to do is to choose the strategy you want to backtest. This time you switch to data provider name to local file, which means you have your historical data download to your local. And then you want to use it to backtest. You need to still need to choose a end date, start date for backtesting. This time, you need to follow the instruction to provide historical data to iBridge Pi. It's straightforward because the file name is this one. You want to provide it to SPY. This is the minute bar, and you want to provide this historical data to SPY for daily testing. Let's run it. And you can see iBridge Pi started to backtest line by line and you can see 
the trading robots bought some share, sold some share, bought, sold, and end. And to visualize the result, let's run the next line. You can see is this one is backtesting date number. It's not a real date, but just simulation date. And the y-axis is the account portfolio in dollar. The default value right now is 200,000. You can see the price go like this. And this is how we backtest using historical data. The next, the next demo is like this. The next, the idea of next demo is think about the problem with this backtesting strategy is you need to have a minute bar data. You need to provide a daily bar data. The reason for that is average pi simulate trades at one minute before market close. However, it needs historical data. So it needs historical data at 359 to simulate the price. The difficulty for traders is that minute bar is not easily available. Think about if you go to Yahoo Finance, they only have daily bar for the time frame go back to year, let's say 2000. They don't provide minute bar. So it caused some difficulty for traders to simulate for a long backtesting time frame. To help you solve that problem, Average Pi have another way to simulate minute bar data. So the solution is you provide data source name change to a value called simulated by daily bars. The default way is whenever Average Pi needs a minute bar data, it will go to daily bar and use the close price to simulate the minute bar data. This one is a little bit tricky, but think about that. For example, you need the trading price at 359 for a day, but you don't have it. What are you going to do? You're going to say, hmm, 359 is pretty close to the close price. Let's go just use the close price of daily bar to do the simulation and it makes things much easier. So let's run it. Average pi will still do the simulation, but this time it doesn't, I, I did not provide minute bar data. I just gave it daily bar data and run it. It still works. And how about the result? You can see the result is pretty close to the previous one. It's not exactly the same because I'm using the I'm not using the real minute bar data at 359, but I use the close price. You can see the shape is kind of similar to the previous one. But hey, it's just simulation, it's an approximation there. So we accept, let me make sure. Right now I'm switching to my presentation and I want to make sure everyone can see it at the moment. We are on the so, Jupiter night right now. How about now? I'm uh, switching back to my presentation. It's still switching, I guess. It's taking some time. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, right there. Can you see my screen right now? This should be the presentation at the moment. It is? Uh, it is It is showing the uh, result chart, I guess, just a second. No, we can still still see the Jupyter notebook only. Still notebook only? Oh. Yeah. How about now, still? Yes, now we can see your presentation. Oh. Oh, this is my personal email. <laughs> okay, presentation right now. Actually, yes. I'm pretty close to the end of my presentation. 
But right now, you should see the, the page with two chart, two graph, and this is the simulated result. Only use daily bar. So I run the simulation back to year 2000. And you can see on the left side, this one is SPY chart. If you buy and hold SPY, this will be the result in your account. You can see it's not that smooth because the market go up and down. However, if you run buy low, sell high, and run the back testing from year 2000 to year 2020, you can see your portfolio looks like this from 200,000 to 800,000. So compared to this two chart, you will see, wow, buy low sell high is better than buy and hold SPY overall. The reason for that, we build a model. Even if the correlation using the simplest linear regression is not a big number, it's a tiny number considering linear regression model, but it still make pretty good result overall. And do you feel comfortable to run it in live trading? If yes, then we switch to live trade. Live trade is really simple no code change at all in average pipe what you need to do to run live trading is just switch to run me dot py actually as easy as that choose a file name and then run it if i can easily switch to my screen can i can you see my screen right now i assume yeah, we are, we we are seeing a live trade slide. Okay, now we are on Jupiter. On oh, Jupiter, that's good. When you switch to live trade, it's really, really simple, just like these lines. Just two lines, actually. One line is choose the file name, which is the strategy. For example, you just want to say, okay, I choose example show real time price. Next thing is put account code, which is IB account code as easy as that. If you want already, you just click run. It will continuously run. But right now, because I'm running this one, switch it. So to live trade, oh, oh, socket break. If you see that error, which means I'm running another average pi instance because I'm using this one, this one is connecting to uh, IB as well. And if we run it again, I assume it should go. Yeah, you see, it start to, right now is your robots in active mode right now. You can see average pi, you started to run and my account information and it starts. If you leave it running, you have and also you can see it's just running at the moment. And that's as easy as a pi, right? To run a uh, uh, average pi robots. Okay, can you see my screen? Actually, I'm on the last page of my presentation. I want to say thank you very much for your attention and if you need any help on coding, please check out our well-known Rent a Coder service. And my email is ibridgepi at gmail.com. This is Dr. Hui Liu from San Jose, California, United States. If you happen to visit here, drop me an email. I'd love to meet you in person with a mask. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, such a wonderful presentation and showcasing various demos. And uh, I hope it was amazing experience for all the attendees. Now we will start off with the Q&A session. So you can start uh, uh, putting in your questions in the questions panel. 
and before we uh, uh, move on to the q and a uh, i would again uh, you know give you a reminder that uh, uh, we are hosting uh, another session tomorrow so i'll just uh, share my screen okay so as you can see uh, so we have uh, our next session tomorrow that is on a two hour uh, long master class by loha bernu who will be joining us from japan and uh, this is going to be starting a bit early than usual so uh, for uh, all the indian participants it is going to be 9:30 am in the morning and for people out there in new york it is going to be in the midnight and uh, for uh, people in singapore it is going to be noon and uh, for people in london it is going to be 9 am in the morning and for people in sydney it is going to be 2 pm in the afternoon so yeah i think uh, i'm going to make uh, again uh, i'm going to make dr liu present uh, uh, presenter so that uh, if uh, when we pick any questions if he wants to refer back to his slides he can quickly do that so Let me click share. So I assume you can see my screen right now. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. We can see. Okay, great. All right. So I think there are a lot of questions. So given the limited time, we'll try to pick as many as possible. So the first one that I see here is uh, when applying a strategy on backtesting. what is the certainty that the strategy will provide identical results on the live trades okay very good question actually think about what's the difference between backtesting and live trading the problem is think about i'm using a price at 350 however this price if you trade in a live trade this price is volatile think about that especially when the price uh, when the time is very close to the market close so you need to keep it in mind historical data is just uh, a past we assume our model is statistically stable however the price it will not be stable so that there definitely are some variations you need to consider the future cannot be predicted 100% even 10% it's very hard to predict future however for long trend considering a long time period the overall model will still stay true however think about if the financial market or the overall world have some significant change definitely you need to revisit your model and to check if that model still work or not and there are other techniques to build a stable model than others so that you need to more learning to understand how to build a model how to make sure your model does not overfit your result so that's my answer so you need to be very careful to choose your model do not overfit and you will have a better chance to predict future yes that's my answer thank you for the question thank you dr liu so i hope now you uh, this answers your question so the next one is uh, why you are using the linear regression model why not any other okay the reason for that is a linear regression is the easiest one everyone can understand as a demo i don't use it for live trading but it's easier for everyone to follow i assume everyone familiar with that and i can explain the model very well however you can use other models but for example you can run a random forest model but it will be very very hard for people to understand the model and it will be hard for me to explain the model in such a short time but feel free to use any other model but still be careful do not overfit use 
simpler model, you have less chance for overfitting. Less overfitting, which means your model will be more stable, more trustworthy. Yeah, so that's my answer. All right, the next question is, uh, how frequently should we retrain the model? Depends on your strategy. Think about if you use a minute bar and you have enough historical data, I would say a few months, you will collect a lot, a lot of minimum bar data to run your model. Then probably it's a good time. If you build daily model, I assume a few years. So it depends on what kind of model and how much data you have. Make sure you provide as much as data as possible to your model, to train your model you will have better mm, result and better predictability. So it's no hard and no, no, no clear answer, but as much po possible data as possible. So you will have a feeling that if that data is long enough or too short, you will have feeling when you build your model. All right. Uh, we are going to pick one last question as we are running out of time. So the one last question. Uh, how can we manage the stop levels risk? Great question. Stop level to control. Actually, you can use both stops. Uh, uh, stop loss and take profit to control the risk. So control risk is hard actually. However, to make things a little bit easier, think about buy low, sell high. I didn't specifically put any stop loss or take profit point, but think about that. I build it into the model, which means if the price go up, I clear off square off my my portfolio. So it's kind of protection, risk management. It's not explicitly put stop loss. However, what you can do is to build in into your model, but it will be hard in a statistical model to have a stop loss point. My suggestion is in your backtesting framework, set a stop loss point by your code and the wrong back testing and then compare your result with the strategy that does not have a stop loss point so which means this strategy have a stop loss and this one does not have stop loss and the wrong back testing both of them compare result you will see if your stop loss point will help you or not so that's my suggestion so in summary it's hard to put stop loss into your model not easy but you can do that but it's hard the easier way is to in back testing framework set up stop loss and then back test compare result it will help you to decide what kind of stop loss you need? I hope that answers. I'm getting a lot of questions now. So uh, considering that one last question, I think uh, in case uh, any of your questions are not answered, please make sure that you fill the survey at the end of the uh, session where you can uh, ask all the questions that were missed in the webinar and we'll make sure that we get them answered by the Dr. Liu here. So the last question and a very interesting one that I found is, uh, what is the minimum data size would uh, work for backtesting depending upon various time intervals like microseconds, milliseconds, or day data? Great question. And for, think about, I don't recommend regular traders to get involved high frequency trading, no. Actually, uh, Nitish had a great presentation in other event, talk about high frequency trading. 
and you can go to that webinar, you will understand for regular traders, there's no way to beat institutions in high frequency trading area. There's no way simply. So do not get into that area. So my recommendation is minute bar. If you have enough data for minute bar, then that's the lowest level, reliable level to backtest. And daily bar, hourly bar depends on your choice. Use your judgment. And I just recall the previous question asked me how much data is good for backtesting. And I remember based on a rough, very rough experience is compare the number of factors to your model. Number of factors, think about it. And the rule of thumb is if you have 100 to one, I mean 100, one factor, for each factor, you have 100 data points to fit your model. That is roughly good. If you have less data, then your model will be not that great. Too much data, you, you will have more confidence, but typically you may not have enough data. So rule of thumb, one factor, 100 data points. Wow, I think uh, that's the perfect response you were expecting. So again, <laughs> so uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Liu, for taking out time and uh, having this, uh, like delivering this wonderful presentation. And uh, uh, a very heartfelt thank you uh, from uh, people at Quantinsty as well as from our audience. And uh, yeah, the next thing uh, I want to talk about uh, to the audience is, uh, do not miss tomorrow's masterclass uh, by Loho. And uh, uh, till then, uh, take care and uh, uh, have a great day. Have a good night. Bye bye. Thank you very much. I really appreciate this opportunity to talk. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Liu. Nice having you here. Okay. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Catch you in the next one.